Hi everyone and welcome back to the Sex Advent Calendar, 25 days of sex education all through the month of December. I'm Bianca Palmazano, I'm the owner of Intimate Health Consulting and I am bringing to you this Sex Ed Fest. <laughs> So today we are talking about safer sex with vulvas and vaginas. Yeah. Look, I'm trying to be clever on YouTube. So I already did one video way back when on safer sex with vulvas and the link is down below. But that video has really terrible webcam quality and so I'm making a new one. And while the information covered in the old video um, is some of the basic stuff about uh, barriers and um, other safer sex protocols, I wanna go into a 201 approach here. So for all of you folks with vaginas and vulvas, one thing that I think people don't know about safer sex is the fact that your STI infections and other immunocompromising infections can compound on one another. And that is a major bummer, especially when you consider the fact that 80% or more of the time when you have an STI, you have no symptoms of it. And so a lot of people don't know that they're infected at all. So that means you're more vulnerable to getting another STI, even when you don't know that you have the first one. This is especially important for people who are dealing with chronic infections that affect their immune systems. So you can't always cure an STI or uh, another immune system disorder. Um, and so we need to be extra cautious in those situations to prevent getting another infection that can compound it and cause extra problems. So an example of that would be if you have HPV and particularly if it's not particularly well controlled, um, so if your viral load is pretty high, that that means that if you get uh, exposed to another STI, like chlamydia or gonorrhea, you're much more likely um, for your body not to be able to fight it off and then to come down with symptoms. I also want to talk a little bit about HPV vaccination. So human papillomavirus is one of the most common STIs out there. Um, Almost everyone will get it at some point in their life, and the body clears out 90% of these infections on their own. We're really powerful like that. But the problem is the 10% of those infections that don't get cleared automatically are the really dangerous ones. Uh, HPV can lend itself to cervical cancer and to genital warts, and both of which are really no fun, but cervical cancer is definitely the more serious of the two. So an HPV vaccination is a three-part shot um, that will give you protection against some of the most common strains of those cancer-causing viruses. So, it's recommended for young women or specific, more specifically people with vulvas and vaginas, but it's actually available to anyone that wants it because you can get HPV and keep it as a carrier and there's no way to test for it in people who have penises. So if you have a vagina and specifically if you have a cervix, um, you will get a pap smear once every three to five years and that should keep track of whether you have a cancer-causing strain of HPV, but it's really nice to be able to have that vaccination as another line of protection uh, against this more serious strain. And the last thing I want to talk about is lubricant. So most of us are familiar with those store brands like KY and Wet that are really easily accessible. You can go to CVS or to the grocery store and pick some up, but they're really not the best out there for our bodies. And the reason for that is a term called osmolality, which essentially just means it's the direction of water absorption in cells. So that means whether a lubricant or another substance causes the cell to take on more water, to release water, or is isotonic. So that means that there is even movement of water in and out of the cell. And that's related to the concentration of any other chemicals that are going on in the solution that surrounds the cell. So Dangerous Lily put out the Big Lube Guide, which is a wonderful resource for understanding the osmolality of different lubricants that are out on the market. And the reason that we care about osmolality is actually because it does damage to our cells. So when a solution or a lubricant in particular is um, not in equilibrium with our cells, it can cause irritation and cell death, which makes you more 
susceptible to STI transmission. So you think you're doing something really good by using lubricant, which reduces friction and should make it make sex both safer and more fun, you could actually be shooting yourself in the foot by using a lubricant that inflames your cells. So, so I will give links to that um, lube guide and also to a super nerdy study that talks a little bit more about STI transmission. And you'll find that the lubes that came out on top are any kind of silicone-based lube and uh, the water-based lube Good Clean Love, which some people says uh, tastes like or smells like birthday cake. Maybe that's a good thing for you, maybe it's not. I am also linking to my Safer Sex Bingo card in the description for this video, which is a really fun way to start a conversation with your partners about how to incorporate other safer sex behaviors into your sex life. I hope this was helpful and useful, and feel free to take a look at my 101 version of Safer Sex for Vulvas and Vaginas uh, down below, and stay tuned for more videos all throughout December.